Jared Goff just completed 18 out of 18 passes against the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football. A perfect game, right? Well, it depends on who you ask. A perfect game in baseball is pretty easy to define. A team must not allow any opposing player to reach base, whether it's a hit, a walk, a hit by pitch, a drop third strike, catcher's interference, fielding error, and I think there's one other way to reach base but I can't think of it right now. 27 at-bats where all of them result in an out. That's a perfect game in baseball. Simple. Indisputable even. But what exactly is considered a perfect game in the NFL? Well, depending on who you ask, it's all based upon this number right here. 158.3, the highest possible passer rating a quarterback can post. Now, despite Jared Goff completing all 18 of his pass attempts, his passer rating of 155.8 was not perfect. He was marginally short by two and a half points to be exact which means you won't be seeing Jared Goff listed on this Wikipedia page right here. Well, actually you will because he did have a perfect pass rating game back in 2018, but not for this performance I'm talking about right now. But here's the question I want to ask. Would you say that Jared Goff played a perfect game of football? Aside from him completing 100% of his passes, he threw for almost 300 yards, tossed two touchdowns, had no turnovers, and he even caught a touchdown too. All of that in a winning effort to bring his Detroit Lions to 3-1 going into week 5. Jared Goff was actually not the only Detroit Lions player to post a 100% completion percentage. The other one was Amon Ross St. Brown. But here's the thing, volume matters. Amon Ross St. Brown only attempted one pass. Now, you could make the argument that Jared Goff only attempted 18 passes in this game when the average pass attempts per game in the NFL so far this season is over 31. But still, the guy threw 18 passes, and not one of them was an incomplete pass. Every time Jared Goff threw the football on Monday night, it didn't touch the ground. It went into the hands of his receiver for a completed pass. And he is actually the only quarterback in NFL history to end a game with a 100% completion percentage with over 15 pass attempts. So to hell with volume, that is impressive. And he was making some pretty good passes too. It's not like he was throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage on every play. As I mentioned before, Jared Goff had a touchdown catch. Let's just say he was the one who threw the ball instead of Amon Ross St. Brown. That would have given him another completion, 7 extra yards, and another touchdown. All of which would have equated to a perfect pass rating. So for all intents and purposes, Jared Goff played a perfect game of football on Monday night. And that's kind of the issue with passer rating. It doesn't account for rushing yards or rushing touchdowns, or in this case, receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. The only way passer rating reflects the quality of a quarterback's performance is based solely on what the quarterback does with his arm. Passes completed, passes attempted, yards thrown for, touchdowns thrown, and interceptions. That's it. It also doesn't account for all the little things that quarterbacks do pre-snap awareness, changing the play at the line of scrimmage when he doesn't like what he sees, and just general leadership. Or how about just the quality of throws? An example being this throw right here by Geno Smith in the same game as Jared Goff's perfect night. A perfectly thrown football. Geno put that ball exactly where only DK Metcalf could get it, and they gained 20 yards from it. If Geno threw the football behind the line of scrimmage and the receiver took it for 20 yards, it would have had the same impact on his pass rating as that beautiful pass he threw to DK Metcalf. And here's another flaw with pass rating. If a quarterback loses a fumble, that's bad, right? That's a turnover. It's pretty much the same result as an interception. But passer rating doesn't account for lost fumbles. Back in week 5 of the 2012 NFL season, Michael Vick posted a passer rating of 104.2. Sounds pretty good, right? But he actually lost two fumbles in this game. If we go back to the passer rating calculator and turn Michael Vick's lost fumbles into interceptions, his passer rating sinks down to 76.3. That is greatly lower than his 104.2. A passer rating over 100 compared to a passer rating in the 70s tells a completely different story. At the risk of being redundant, I'm just going to give you one more example as to why passer rating is a flawed stat. Last year for the Cincinnati Bengals, quarterback Jake Browning became the starter after Joe Burrow got injured. Now I could do the whole player A, player B thing and put their stats on the screen without telling you who they are and ask you who would you rather have based on their stats alone. But I'm not going to do that. That's derivative. So I'll just tell you. In 2023, Joe Burrow completed over 66% of his passes and had a passer rating of 91. Jake Browning completed over 70% of his passes and had a passer rating of 98.4. Sure, Jake Browning had a higher completion percentage and higher pass rating than Joe Burrow. But all due respect, you are genuinely crazy if you would rather have Jake Browning be your quarterback over Joe Burrow. Also, while we're on the topic of completion percentage, that's a pretty flawed stat too. I mean, David Carr led the NFL in completion percentage back in 2006, so, you know, that's not a perfect stat either. So what's the deal with passer rating? 
Should we just dismiss it completely from here on out? I don't think so. I believe that passer rating gives you a pretty good idea on how well a quarterback performs. If a quarterback ends a game with a passer rating of 0.0, .0 like Geno Smith did that one time in 2014, that means he had an awful game. And if a quarterback ends with a perfect passer rating of 158.3, like Geno Smith also did back in 2014, that means he must have had a pretty great game, right? Passer rating just doesn't tell you the whole story. So, was Jared Goff's performance against the Seattle Seahawks last week a perfect game? Well, according to passer rating, no. But if you ask me, hell yeah, that was a perfect game. He played an amazing game of football. 18 pass attempts, not a single one hit the ground. That's perfect if you ask me. Funnily enough, Jared Goff just so happens to be the owner of the greatest perfect passer rating performance of all time back in 2018. He threw 465 yards, had 5 touchdown passes, it was just an amazing game. And so was this one. Jared Goff is pretty good, you know? Jared Goff is a pretty good quarterback.